Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our Generation You Can webinar tonight. I want to thank everybody for joining us. I'm your host, Varun Sriram, joined by my compadre, Director of Nutrition, Registered Dietitian for Generation You Can, Seth Bronheim. Seth, what is happening tonight? Hey, Varun. Doing great, man. All right. So we're going to talk about a variety of topics tonight, and then we, we kind of want to start, um, as we always like to do, by discussing some foundations of nutrition to give a, a better context um, to the discussion today. Uh, and then we'll move into a more specific discussion of using UCAN um, and you know what exactly UCAN is and, and all of that good stuff. But let's start by defining um, a critical concept that, that's going to be fundamental to a lot of what we talk about this evening. And, and that is this idea of blood sugar. So Seth, uh, you can weigh in here. What what is blood sugar, and why should we care about keeping our blood sugar stable? So we all have a certain amount of you know just sugar circulating throughout our bloodstream, you know, um, to keep our eyelids open, to keep our to to give our bodies energy. Um, the problem is when it goes you know unstable, where you, you, we you get highs and lows. So as long as blood sugar stays stable, you know, the, the body can remain in balance, and that's when you can stay focused and um, and you know the fact is is that when blood sugar goes up, um, that, that's that's when problems occur. So we really want to just keep it steady. So it, what's interesting is that you know blood sugar, uh, many people may be familiar with it in the context of people who have diabetes. Depending on uh, what type of diabetes you have, you either have very high blood sugar, sometimes people can have very low blood sugar. But um, you know, Seth, for for the average person, you know, and and the reason I bring this up is. You know, even for me, six, seven years ago, when I heard about blood sugar, I associated it with more something that people with diabetes need to worry about. But but why should the average person care about this idea of blood sugar and, and keeping blood sugar stable? Because when you have stable blood sugar, you have steady energy. That's just the bottom line. Um, you know, think if, if think about someone who has you know a, a can of Coke. You know, they might feel good for the first you know 15, 20 minutes, but talk to them an hour later. And um, and usually their blood sugar is coming down, and that means that they're, you know, they're going to become irritable. They might get hungry again. They might not be able to concentrate as much. Um, so that's that's really what it is: is the fact that you know, when you keep your blood sugar stable, your your brain gets steady energy, your your body remains in balance, and you don't have highs and lows in your energy. And that's why it's so important. And the sugar in your bloodstream is what feeds your body. So if you have too much at once, there's consequences. So in that context, you know, what, what really impact blood sugar the most in terms of uh, foods or sports nutrition are sources of carbohydrate. And if we look at a lot of the sports drinks out there, sports nutrition products out there, your early generation products, they used simple sugar. So these are things like fructose and sucrose. Your newer products all started using a carbohydrate called maltodextrin. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about maltodextrin here in a moment. But, but you know, the products you see on the screen, uh, the Hammer products, Accelerate, they all use maltodextrin. Carbapro, they all use maltodextrin as their carbohydrate source. And maltodextrin is certainly an improvement over simple sugars in the sense that it was easier on the stomach. It was a larger molecule. Uh, therefore, the theory was that the, the bigger the molecule is, the, the easier it digested it is. So... That was really where maltodextrin came about. But all of these carbohydrates you find in your traditional sports nutrition products have an impact on blood sugar. Seth, what, what is that impact of these fast-acting carbs, whether it's simple sugar or, or maltodextrin, uh, on this idea of or, or blood sugar? So the fact is that these carbohydrates are digested rapidly, and they, they enter the bloodstream very quickly, and they, they spike your blood sugar. So you might have energy for you know, a, a short period of time, but it requires you to redose on, on that energy and to save yourself from having the highs and lows. So the problem is, is that if someone has, you know, a, a, sh a sugary drink before exercise, they're, they're going to get low blood sugar at some point during their exercise. And, um, and that's because fast acting sugars don't stabilize your blood sugar. So if you're looking at the, uh, the pictures on the screen here, uh, you can see one of the things that, that we kind of haven't talked about. We've talked about um, a little bit so far about the impact of blood sugar and spiking your blood sugar on, on your energy. But what we haven't even mentioned is the idea that when, when you have too many calories, too, uh, too many carbs entering your system quickly and you spike your blood sugar, the body says, I have all this sugar in my blood. 
burn that sugar first, don't burn fat. So that, that's a critical point to remember. And then we're going to get back to this a lot. But, but there's a hormone in the body called insulin that's also in play here, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But, but keep that in mind. When, when you're constantly spiking your blood sugar, especially during exercise or prior to exercise, you're not going to burn fat to the same capability that your body wants to burn it. Now, what's also interesting is even a lot of carbohydrate foods that we're used to, you know, snack bars, uh, like cliff bars or cereals, a piece of bread, a banana, they also have uh, quite an impact on blood sugar. Seth, what, are, what is the impact of these carbohydrates that, you know, so many people are used to consuming prior to exercise? Well, it, it has very similar impact to the, um, you know, to sugar, really. You know, cereal, you know, bananas, wheat bread, it's broken down rapidly and, you know, again, it puts it's put the it's put the emphasis emphasis on burning carbohydrates and not burning body fat. And again, if you have a slice of wheat bread before your hour run, the last 30 minutes of your run, you're gonna get low blood sugar, and you're gonna either have to have a sports drink, you're gonna have to have a gel. Your your body's gonna be um, reliant on redosing sugars. And this is even more important as you go deeper into marathon training, half you know, um, Ironman training. Um, or you're a sport athlete who's going to do a, a two-hour practice. So with all of this uh, context in mind, let's, um, let's talk a little bit about you know, UCAN and, and how this all fits in with UCAN and, and more importantly, the origins of UCAN. So UCAN was originally created for Jonah, who you see on the screen right here. And then Jonah's uh, had a very rare blood sugar disease. So Jonah's uh, the son of one of our co-founders, lives in Connecticut, and, and he's 11 years old right now. But Jonah, from the time he was born, had a very rare blood sugar disease where he couldn't convert stored carbohydrates, uh, also known as glycogen, into glucose, which is also can be referred to as blood sugar. So you know, really what's going on with all of us, when we consume a carbohydrate, um, our body breaks it down and, and converts it into glucose, which can be used by our body as energy. Now, Jonah couldn't do this. He had a very rare genetic defect. So he didn't process carbs like, like most of us. So what, what happened was actually that Jonah um, was, they, they found that if you fed these kids just cornstarch, the Argo cornstarch that you can buy at the grocery store, because it broke down slower than a lot of the carbohydrates that we're talking about, it actually wouldn't overwhelm Jonah's system. He could break it down to some degree, but it would only maintain his blood sugar, maintain his energy for two hours at a time. So he was forced to be fed this cornstarch 10 to 12 times a day um, just to maintain his blood sugar and his energy. And this included three or four nighttime feedings where his parents, uh, Wendy and David, were waking up every two hours around the clock to feed their kids this cornstarch. So, you know, really not a, uh, a ideal solution by, by any means. And actually, you know, when I say it's a rare disease, it only affects about 3,000 kids in the country. In the 70s and 80s, these kids were dying at infancy. And in the 90s, they found that uh, by feeding these kids this cornstarch, as I just described, every two hours, it could keep them steady for two hours at a time. So Jonah's parents, they were very proactive and they started raising money and, and spearheading research to look for the world's best carbohydrate. And, and in their mind, the world's best carb was something that would keep blood sugar stable, keep energy stable for a very long period of time. The idea was they wanted something they could give their son a significant dose of that would keep him steady for at least eight hours so he could sleep eight hours through the night. So, so that's really how Super starch, which is the primary ingredient in UCAN, came about. So, Seth, what what is super starch? What's it all about, and what's so special about it? So, the, so what we've done is is that we've taken non-GMO corn, so it's not genetically modified corn, and it goes through a patented cooking process where all we do is heat it over 40 hours, heat it and dry it. You know, um, you know, the analogy I make is that we, um, you know, when you cook pasta in the course of 10 or 15 minutes, it changes shape. What we're doing is we're taking non-GMO corn, but we're cooking it over 40 hours. So it significantly changes its shape, and it becomes a much longer, larger molecule that, that has no enzymes or chemicals used to make it. And that's because you know our first customers were two-year-old babies. So when this carbohydrate breaks down, though, out of the intestine into the bloodstream, it's slowly getting broken down. Um, the, the enzymes break it down slowly over time, so it drips into your bloodstream providing a steady release of, of energy 
instead of when you have that banana or that half a bagel or wheat bread where the or a sugary drink where the carbohydrate is broken down much more rapidly. You know, and people ask, you know, why do you start with non GMO corn? And that's you know we're because barleys, tapiocas, rice, and wheats, all different carbohydrates were tried to get the best effect on the stabilizing blood sugar, which is what we'll show you again. But the fact is it's non-GMO corn, and it goes through a 40-hour patented cooking process that elongates the carbohydrate to give you the results we're about to show you. So what's pretty, uh, you know, just a few, a few things on it to, to emphasize, as Seth mentioned, the, the cooking process is completely natural, just non-GMO corn, heat, and water. Uh, this carb is actually less processed than oatmeal, and, um, you know, it had to be that way because infants were the first people taking it. It's gluten-free. Uh, we have many people uh, with celiac disease um, who, or, or just people with gluten intolerance is really thriving on the product, and, and there's a lot of science behind it in terms of stabilizing blood sugar because they compare this against every other carb out there. So really what happened was as, you know, the, the, uh, the founders of our company found that this was working so well for Jonah, they started thinking, hey, who else could benefit from stabilizing blood sugar? And then they quickly turned to people, to athletes, people exercising, you know, to runners, triathletes, or just the general person trying to be fit and, and con started contacting a lot of sports dietitians and, and talking to them about the, the principles of the carbohydrate. And one gentleman, uh, his name's Bob Sibahar, who was the Olympic dietitian for the 2008 triathlon team, really made a strong statement and said, if, if your carb does what you say it does, it'll be a complete game changer for my athletes. It'll completely change the way sports dietitians, sports nutritionists think about fueling the body. Because what Bob told us was at the time, the best thing people were doing in terms of stabilizing blood sugar were dosing with some sort of sugar or maltodextrin-based drink every 20 or 30 minutes, you know, in order – to maintain their blood sugar. So they were putting their body through those ups and downs because that was that was the only way. Uh, with UCAN, we stabilized blood sugar on our own, which is what we'll show you. So we did a clinical trial at the University of Oklahoma and we wanted to complain, compare, excuse me, <laughs> compare <laughs> our carb, our super starch carb against maltodextrin, which uh, like I mentioned, all the newer sports nutrition products we're using. So Seth, what are folks looking at uh, here on the screen? So we're, we're looking at the red line here. Um, which is our carbohydrate, and that's that's our blood sugar curve, which relates to how it releases energy. You see, it's very steady release over time. Whereas with maltodextrin, you know, which was a great improvement to your simple sugars, but still spikes blood sugar significantly, as Varn was talking about. And the problem is, is that is that with every spike comes that crash, and um, we're keeping blood sugar levels very steady, so we're giving you little bits of energy over time matching the rate the brain and muscles actually need carbohydrate um, instead of entering your bloodstream so rapidly causing you to, to over um, over need the um, and rely on over uh, carbohydrates but again that spike in blood sugar is significant from maltodextrin and it's shutting down the body's ability uh, to burn fat as fuel which we'll get into in a second so uh, a couple things uh, more on this graph. So for, for any of you who are runners or triathletes or endurance athletes who are familiar with the gels or, or the, the various sugar-based gummies or chews, um, if you notice on this graph at around the 30-minute point on the x-axis is when you start to see a significant drop in blood sugar, and, and that's that's the, the sugar crash. And, you know, there's a reason the dosing protocols for a lot of those products tell you to take it every 30 or 40 minutes, and, and that's really because it's coinciding with when your blood sugar drops. So when your blood sugar drops, you need to spike back up again. Remember, at, at, if, if you remember one thing from this, that everything we've been talking about, it's really that steady blood sugar equals steady energy. When your blood sugar is nice and steady, you don't have the highs and lows. You're not feeling that that woozy feeling or that fatigue feeling, you know, 30 minutes into the workout. You're not uh, feeling like, hey, I need to keep refueling. So that's that's really the key. We just got a couple more slides of science, and then uh, I want to uh, put up a poll and and talk some practical uses and answer some questions as well. So. We teased this uh, idea about this hormone insulin uh, earlier, but um, this graph really shows what many experts found to be the most remarkable aspect of our carbohydrate. So Seth, what are we looking at um, over here? So insulin is a storage hormone, and the fact is that every time you, you digest carbohydrate calories that spike your blood sugar, you know, the body produces insulin to bring your blood sugar back down. The other function of insulin is, is to tell your body to stop burning fat because the fact is if you have a lot of energy in your body from carbohydrates, why would you ever need to burn your own body fat? So 
as you see here, since maltodextrin is rapidly absorbed, there's a huge spike in insulin prior to exercise, but then also in the recovery period. If you look at UCAN, we're the red line. You can barely see it. It's flatlining insulin. So every gram of our carbohydrate is absorbed as energy. But since we did not have the insulin reaction, we show that you can actually burn more fat throughout and post-exercise um, rather than simply relying on, um, on fueling with just the carbohydrates you eat. And I want to quickly just go back to the previous slide and say one thing. You know, for those of you that are familiar uh, with the concepts that we're talking about in blood sugar and insulin, you might be saying to yourself, hey, but aren't there other things that don't spike blood sugar? Like you could say raspberries, for example, or, or Seth, what's another example of like a carb source that doesn't really spike blood sugar? Broccoli. Broccoli. There you go. So, so, so the, the question that, that you may be asking yourself is, so what's the difference between UCAN versus something like broccoli or something like raspberries, having that before our, the workout? And Seth, uh, I'll let you as, uh, as the dietitian and um, answer that question. What, what, what would be the difference in terms of energy? Well, th those things are, are great that they don't raise your blood sugar, but the fact is the uniqueness of UCAN is how it releases over time. The fact is you're, when you're 30 minutes into your run, you're still getting fresh energy out of your intestine into your bloodstream from UCAN, whereas with raspberries, it would still get absorbed quicker, but it's just that it's not going to raise your blood sugar so much. So, so it's really the uniqueness on how it's released over time, keeping you, keeping you very steady and even, so you're getting a steady release of energy. And if you're running, you can sustain your power endurance. If you're doing you know, strength training, you can do set after set and not have highs and lows in your energy. And, and you're not burning through your sugar so quickly because you're also able to burn your body fat. And, 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 and that's the uniqueness of UCAN is that it's keeping you steady while you burn your own body fat. So all naturally. So something like, you know, broccoli or raspberries, you know, the, like Seth said, it, it's not going to spike you, but it's not going to maintain you for nearly as long as you can. So, you know, you may have broccoli or raspberries before a workout and feel good for a little bit because you're, you're not going to have that crash, but you're not going to have that as Seth, uh, you know, just to reiterate that that steady time release of glucose throughout your workout. So you're still getting the carbohydrate, you know, deep into the workout. So, so that's, that's uh, just, just something to note. Um, so let's, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the, uh, you know, kind of overall in summary. So really the benefits of UCAN, uh, a primary benefit is that it keeps your blood sugar stable, which means that there's no spike and crash, no highs and lows in energy, just that nice, steady, maintained energy for, for several hours, depending on, um, you know, the dose you take and, and, you know, if, if you're exercising or not, we'll, we'll get into that in a moment, but, you know, in general, a serving of you can for, uh, taken before exercise will give you a good 90 minutes to two hours of nice, steady blood sugar. If you're having it outside of the context of exercise, like as part of a meal replacement shake, or just in the middle of the day as a, as a healthier energy source, um, you, we're, we're talking three, four hours really allows you to burn both fat and carbohydrate for fuel by keeping blood sugar steady and by keeping insulin very low. Um, we, we talked a little bit about this, but you know, when we're talking about maltodextrin being easier on the stomach, it's because it was a larger molecule than simple sugar. So um, there, there's something called osmolality and molecular weight. Um, and so basically, if something has a high molecular weight, it means it has a low osmolality, which means it, it passes through your stomach very quickly. So just to put this in context, you can, our super starch carb is 5,000 times the molecular weight of maltodextrin. So that's a scientific way to say it gets in and out of your stomach very quickly. 10 minutes after you drink it, you know, you really won't feel it in your gut at all. And then that's great for people doing high intensity work, you know, morning uh, exercisers who generally don't want to wake up early enough to get like a, like, you know, some type of uh, breakfast in them. Uh, you can works perfect in those situations. And and finally, you know, it's a food. You can it has a nutrition facts label. It's a food product. It's not a supplement. So, um, you know, like we mentioned, uh, uh, it, it's less processed than oatmeal. But, but what's kind of funny is a lot of the pro sports teams and college teams that buy the product actually buy it with the same budget they used to buy steaks, not not their supplement budget. So so it's really looked at as a food. And then it's uh, you know a completely natural energy source in terms of our carbohydrate. Uh, it's just non-GMO corn, heat, and water, and it's gluten-free. So let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the products that we have, and then we'll get to some of your questions. Um, there's essentially two versions of UCAN. There's the sports drink mix and the protein-enhanced drink mix. I'm going to leave out the plain UCAN for now, but we could certainly address that um, you know, a little bit later if, if people want to talk about that. But 
everything has 30 grams, roughly 30 grams per packet of our super starch carbs. So again, super starch is the key ingredient, whether you were talking the protein you can or the, the, the fruit flavors of you can, um, the sports drink mix, all of them have the carbohydrate in the same amount per serving. Uh, they both have electrolytes, sodium and potassium comparable to, you know, any of your other sports nutrition products out there. And the, the primary difference between the protein enhanced drink mix is that it has 13 grams of whey protein on top of all the other stuff. So the protein enhanced mix comes in chocolate and vanilla cream. The sports drink mix comes in orange, pomegranate, blueberry, lemonade, and cranberry raspberry. So really for all of these, uh, the way you want to think of it, uh, when we're talking about pre-workout, let's start there, is, is it's your pre-workout snack. You're having this instead of a bagel, instead of a banana, instead of a, you know, instead of a, a protein bar. Um, and you really want to mix it with 8 to 12 ounces of cold water. Give it a good hard shake. It's not going to dissolve in water. It's a little bit of a thicker consistency. So really shake it well and drink it you know, about 30 minutes prior to the workout. Now, Seth, just in the context of pre-workout, what would be the difference between using the sports drink mix versus the protein drink mix? Well, if, if you're someone who wakes up with morning hunger or you want to treat it more like a healthy snack before, the added protein in the protein drink mix is going to help curb hunger in the stomach. If you're also, if you're someone who's, who wants to maintain their muscle mass or um, is looking for extra calories from healthy calories from protein calories, um, you would choose the protein drink mix. But from an energy perspective, I've had the tropical orange before a workout and the vanilla cream before a workout. And I feel the same uh, effect from that. It's just if you're, you know, it's more about hunger or in terms of uh, protecting muscle mass for the benefits of protein that you would choose the protein drink mix. So both of them can be used before. Um, in, and, uh, you know, in terms of during the workout, in general, uh, one packet gives you a good 90 minutes to two hours of steady and even energy without needing to refuel. So that, that applies whether you're going for a run, whether you're going for a bike ride, whether you're strength training, yoga, Pilates, you name it. It, it. it doesn't matter. You know, steady blood sugar is going to be beneficial no matter what type of workout you're doing. And, and, and what's interesting is we haven't found there to be so much variance uh, in terms of, of size and, and how much you can you need uh, in terms of keeping your blood sugar stable. You know, we have 300 pound NFL linemen using a packet for, you know, a two hour, uh, a two hour strength training session we have you know a 135 pound marathon runner like meb using a packet you know before a two-hour uh boston marathon victory um and that's what meb had he had the, the lemonade packet an hour before he won boston and, and no additional calories during so so really um you know the variance we see is probably more based on the intensity of your workout and and uh to some extent how efficient you are at burning fat, but, but our general recommendations, um, you know, are, are really, uh, we found for most people, a packet will give them 90 minutes to two hours. Just a side note, if any of you guys have, um, you, you know, used you can for a while now and have moved on to the tubs, when we're talking about a serving in the context of packets, um, really we're, what we're saying, uh, is one and a half scoops from a tub roughly equals one packet. So the tubs a slightly smaller serving size. So a scoop from a tub is going to give you about an hour of steady energy if you're, if you're going for a little bit longer and want a little bit more, you know, up it to one and a half or two scoops. And then finally, uh, so, you know, for workouts longer than two hours, generally our recommendation is a packet every 90 minutes. And with UCAN, the thing is you want to be a little bit ahead of it. You don't want to take it when you feel low and you need that burst right away because that's not the way UCAN works. It's not giving you that spike or that quick rush. It's giving you a little bit of a slower breakdown and that nice and steady release. So, so if you find that a packet of you can lasts you two hours and you're going for a three hour, you're doing a three hour workout. You want to take that next dose of you can roughly, you know, 90 or a hundred minutes into the workout. So you have, you give it about 20, 30 minutes to kick in. Um, you can use either the sports drink mix or the protein drink mix during, but, uh, we, you know, we found that most people do like whether they use the sports drink or the protein drink, uh, prior to the workout, we do find that most people do uh, generally consume the sports drink mix during there's a, there's a small percentage of people that, uh, you know, having protein during the workout may affect their stomach. But, uh, but you know, for, for a lot of people, it's just the preference of uh, fruit tasting flavor versus like chocolate or vanilla, uh, during the workout. Um, and, and then finally they can both be used, uh, you know, as a, as a healthy snack in the middle of the day. Um, they can both be used, uh, you know, that two o'clock time in the afternoon when you might reach for that third cup of coffee or think like, hey, let me get a little bit of a burst from a soda. 
a lot of people are having keeping a packet of UCAN at their desk at work and having it at that time. You know, the protein uh, drink mix works great uh, as part of a breakfast shake in the morning. I'll often do a, a packet of vanilla cream with almond milk a little bit of fruit and some peanut butter and, and some spinach and blend it uh, with ice in the morning. And, and that'll last me a good four, four and a half hours. Um, so that's one way to think of it. And, th and then finally, the protein you can can be used for recovery as well. It can be used after the workout. So Seth, you know, in terms of using protein you can post-workout, how would you compare it to, let's say, something like chocolate milk for recovery? Why, why, why is you can a better post-workout option? Well, the, the thing is, is that with chocolate milk, again, it's going to spike your blood sugar after a workout. So with you can you get to recover while you keep your blood sugar stable, not having all that sugar in your bloodstream, causing that insulin rise, causing your body to not continue to burn fat. The beauty of you can is that you can recover while you continue to burn fat. So the recovery you can is great to replenish your body, but also for anybody with a body composition goal looking to maintain their weight or lose weight, you can post workout keeps your blood sugar stable while you continue the fat burning effects for the next couple hours. So you're really able to take advantage of the workout and get the most out of your workout. Um, if you have chocolate milk, you spike your blood sugar and your body says, Hey, I got all this sugar in my blood. Stop burning all that fat I was burning during my workout. So you shut off the ability to continue to burn fat. It's counterintuitive if you're looking to, um, to keep the body burning fat, but also you know, after you have chocolate milk or a sugary-based recovery drink, you're hungry an hour later. You're looking for something else, and that doesn't work if you have a, if you have a busy job, um, or you just don't want to be reliant on food so much. You want to be able to keep your blood sugar stable. So important. And Seth, how about so you know, definitely understand with, with something like chocolate milk with 20 or 25 grams of sugar, why you can, especially with, for those with body composition goals, is a far more sensible option. Um, how does uh, you know the the protein you can compare to just like having a, a plain scoop of whey protein after your workout? You know, with with no carbs or, or minimal carbs. So the problem is that if you know after after a workout, your body's always looking for a way to get sugar back into your bloodstream. So you know because you don't want because you don't want to get low blood sugar. So if you just have protein, you're, you're going to use some of that protein to convert back to. Um, to, to blood sugar, and so you, you waste some of the protein converting it to energy. Your body's number one concern after a workout is is getting your energy back. And then the next concern is, is recovering the muscles, um, and that's why you know it's why it's important to have protein. But it's, you need to have carbohydrates with your protein, so you maximize use of protein. Use the protein for structural reasons to replenish the muscles. Don't use the protein. Um, you don't want to use just protein alone because you don't have any way to replenish the body. It's that's why it's so important to have you can post workout. So let's uh, transition over to talking about some some use cases and some of the questions that we were getting from the audience. And um, before I do that, I just like uh, for those of you in attendance to to help us out by answering the poll that you see on the screen. Um, just want to find out what people are interested in using you can for, so we can uh, tailor uh, the remainder of our discussion to talking about. Um, those aspects of you can. So in the meantime, while we do that, let's see, um, we have got, um, a question from Mark. So Mark asks, um, does you can have enough electrolytes or should you mix in other electrolyte sources such as, you know, noon tablets, or we actually just came out with, um, you know, our own electrolyte product, our you can hydrate product, which you'll see available on our website, which is, uh, again, it's a zero calorie, no sugar electrolyte replacement drink. Um, it's, uh, you know, really uh, the, one of the unique features of it. It was designed by an Olympic dietitian with the specific ratios of electrolytes matching what you lose in sweat. It's also got a higher magnesium content than a lot of electrolytes out there, which, which is important to aid in energy production from an electrolyte source. And it, it's also completely natural, no artificial ingredients uh, sweetened with stevia. So, but, but, but anyway, Seth, the, for, for Mark's main question, uh, what, what would you say about the electrolyte question he has? So, he, was he an Iron Man or what was his activity? Uh, oh yeah, it looks like uh, yep, it looks like um, Mark is a triathlete. So you know the the average recommendation is 500 milligrams of sodium per hour for a triathlete. So if you have a serving of UCAN, it's roughly 200 milligrams. Um, this is exactly why with our UCAN Hydrate we we made the sodium 300 milligrams. So if you needed extra electrolytes, you get that 500 milligrams by having a UCAN serving. And then also a serving of you can hydrate our electrolyte product per hour. Um, so uh, the fact is that it depends. It depends on on the heat. But if you know you probably need 
um, if it's over two hours, you, you probably want to start using our, our you can hydrate with, for additional electrolytes. So uh, Patty says that um, Patty says I'm doing an Ironman in two and a half weeks and plan to use UCAN as my sole nutrition. Can the product spoil once mixed? Will heat affect it in any way? And what's the best way to prepare a gel? So let's see, Patty. So you had a few questions in there. So the two of them are quick and easy to answer. Um, the, once you mix UCAN, you've got about a 36 to 48 hour window in which you should consume it before. Um, you know, before it may spoil. So, uh, so no issue in terms of Ironman. You can mix it up the night before. We we have people doing that all the time for their races. Um, that's not a problem at all. That's that's very common. So, um, you know, like anything, uh, it, it won't spoil in the heat. It, it'll taste a heck of a lot better when it's cold. But that kind of applies for any type of powdered drink mix. So, um, so yeah. So no no issue with the heat affecting it um, in that way. Just uh, you know, if you can keep it cold, we do have some people who refrigerate it overnight, even freeze it. I know that's a little risky, making sure it thaws in time, but I've had a lot of triathletes that have kind of nailed the timing of that where they freeze it the night before, and by the time they scoop it up and transition, it's nice and cold and, and thawed out. Um, and then uh, in terms of what the best way to prepare a UCAN gel is, so we haven't talked about this yet, so Patty, you you brought us in um, uh, to, the, to this, which I'm sure a lot of people will be interested in. So the amount of water you use has no bearing on how the product works. So our, our general recommendation is eight to 12 ounces of water per serving. But, you know, many people who are doing endurance sports, like most of you here in attendance uh, are doing based on the poll, actually, uh, you know, use you can uh, a packet uh, or a scoop with about two to three ounces of water and just, uh, you know, carry it in like one of those four ounce or six ounce um fuel belt bottles or, or, or gel flask type bottles that you can get at any running or triathlon store. And, and that's really how they make a UCAN gel. It's really just diminishing the amount of water you mix with the carb and then, or, and then uh, with the powder and you're good to go, you know? So you might want to, uh, you know, you do with that little bit of water, you, you might want to uh, shake it up just very, very vigorously, or, or some people will even just toss it in the blender the night before just to really get it smooth and get some of the clumps out but uh but yeah that works really well and and stay tuned to our facebook and our blog actually over the next week um i recently asked a bunch of people on our facebook page you know how they actually make a UCAN gel and got about 40 or 50 really really good responses so we're, we're going to tie all those together and and have a blog up about that uh very topic soon but but yeah patty in general that's the way i'd suggest it let's see lance says um I see on the product container about taking more scoops initially for extended periods of time. So why recommend the one serving initially? Um, let's see, Lance. Let's see if we're understanding your question properly. But if, if anyone has a tub, you know, we, we kind of say uh, one scoop for uh, up to two hours, uh, one to two hours of exercise, two scoops for two plus hours three scoops for three hours. So, so really Lance, the, the way you can interpret that is you can either front load and take that all that entire amount all at once, and then not have to worry so much about fueling uh, during your workout. Or if you're doing three hours of exercise and want to take a scoop before a scoop an hour in and a scoop two hours in, that's totally fine too. So it's really the same recommendation that we're giving you in terms of the packets. It, maybe it's just uh a little unclear. Uh, we we kind of left it open for interpretation whether you front load with that amount or whether you you space it out in intervals. But but really um, that's the idea. You know, a scoop is going to give you about an, an hour of steady energy. The packet's one and a half times the scoop, so the packet's good for about ninety minutes to two hours of steady energy. Um, let's see. Nancy said, um, "Oh, Seth, you'll like this one. I've just bought my first generation UCAN with the idea of triathlons, but I'm curious about its use for weight loss." slash weight management. Um, Seth, uh, what, what, what do you say in terms of implementing it as a weight loss tool? So the thing is, is that what most folks do is they might have, you can, um, in between their meals as a way to keep their blood sugar stable, you know, help um, with, with carbohydrate cravings. I mean, one of the things with weight loss is that you're trying to figure out how to reduce your calories but also exercise more. So Using UCAN before your workouts allows you to have great energy during your workouts while you're keeping your calories a little bit lower, and um, and then using UCAN, um, you know, in between your meals allows you to to keep your blood sugar um, very steady. So if you have UCAN, let's say at uh, you know three o'clock in the afternoon, it's going to keep your blood sugar stable. 
So by the time you go into your next meal, your blood sugar, you're not coming down from a, a blood sugar low. Uh, you're not going to overeat at that, that next meal. You can choose the foods that are based on true physical hunger, healthy proteins, healthy carbohydrates, healthy fats, rather than you know coming home and having chips or having carb cravings or trying to overeat. So that's the beauty of you can is you can use it in between your meals to help you improve your eating habits at your meals. And some people, you know, use you can as a breakfast shake as a way to you know to just start their day because if you start your day with stable blood sugar, you control your blood sugar the rest of the day, and um, that's so important because that means that you know you don't cause that wave that those that high and low effects that causes cravings later in the day. The other thing is that when you use you can, your body freely burns fat, which means that you you're you know during the day, you're actually using more fat as a fuel even at rest. So at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, you're having that you can, you're keeping your blood sugar stable, your brain is having energy. At the same time, your body fat is breaking down, which is very nice. And over time, that's what leads to you know, weight loss results. What's really interesting that, that you know, didn't even really occur to me until we got uh, deep involved in, in this world of endurance sports was how many people were, were telling us at various expos that Seth and I have been at, whether it's been triathlon, running, that they were actually gaining a few pounds when they were training for an endurance event. And, and you know, you initially hear that and, and it surprises you, right? It's, it's very counterintuitive because you associate training for an endurance event with lots of training, lots of exercise. And, and, and the general idea you would, one would think is that that would in turn lead to improved in body composition, weight loss, and, and, you know, all those desired effects. But you take a step back and see what people are consuming to get through their endurance workouts. You know, it's, it's a bunch of sugar, you know, they, they may be taking a gel, you know, 100 calorie, 30 grams of, of simple carbs every 45 minutes, uh, and and they're really taking in so many calories. And while it may, you know, in in a way help them get through their workout, it, it's really causing them to burn sugar the entire workout. And then when you constantly are putting your body through those highs and lows in blood sugar, you end the workout very low. And like Seth just talked about, what happens? You know, you you, you end a long workout and your blood sugar is low. You get home instantly, you know, you're reaching in the fridge to, to, you know, grab whatever's quick and convenient. You're, you're pulling into McDonald's on your way home from the workout. It's, it's really going to result in a lot of craving. So, so one of the big things we've heard from folks about you can is that they just don't have those same cravings when they get through a tough workout where their blood sugar is steady the entire time. Yes, they do still need to eat and replenish and, and all of that stuff, but it's, it's an, in a much more controlled manner. When, when your hunger is controlled, you make better choices. You come home and you take a shower and then you cook yourself a healthy meal rather than, you know, ordering takeout or, or grabbing, like I said, whatever's quick and convenient. So let's just kind of take a quick look uh, on, on this topic uh, at, at Amy over here. So Amy was, uh, you know, had a weight loss goal and uh, was looking to lose inches of belly fat and, and she wanted to run a 10K. And, and her issue was uh, the excessive consumption of processed carbo carbohydrates. She was eating bagels, breads, and um, you know, her nutrition pre and post workout was very poor. So she would start her run, she would, she would exercise on an empty stomach. When she was done, her blood sugar would be low and she'd have, you know, croissants, bagels, the, those types of things. And, uh, you know, like we just talked about, her blood sugar was all over the place. It was going up and down, up and down. And then this was leading to, to carb cravings. So one of the solutions for Amy was she traded in her processed carbs for small amounts of, of slower burning carbs with like sweet potatoes, oatmeal, brown rice. She upped her protein intake, got more veggies with her meals, and she started using UCAN pre-workout and UCAN with protein after her runs to really help her control her hunger cravings and, and more importantly, control her blood sugar. So, you know, in just three months for Amy, uh, she lost 15 pounds, over four inches for her waist, from, and she said she feels great. You can see the before and after pictures right here, and, uh, you know, she, she looks significantly different, you know, both in the face and around the belly. In June of 2013, she could barely run six miles. October of 2013, she completed her half marathon. And, and really, by controlling her blood sugar, it was really uh, you know, much, much easier for her to control her nutrition. Let's see. Uh, we've got a question from Ben. He says, um, I love the product in theory but uh, I've had some issues with it making me a little sick. Uh, is there a way I can consume it without this effect? So, Ben, if you can in the chat tell us what flavor, um, you know, what flavor 
uh, of UCAN you've used, we might be able to help you out. But in Ceph in general, when, when you know, the rare cases where people say they may have some GI issues from UCAN, what do you usually attribute it to? Well, sometimes people use too much water. You know, you don't need, this is not something you dilute. You don't put 20 ounces in a scoop of uh, UCAN. Um, so, you know, the fact is, is if, if you, um, so, you know, in terms of flavor, if you're not a berry person, you might not like the cranberry raspberry. I think the safest flavor to go with is tropical orange or vanilla cream or plain. Um, you know, and so you, you might, you know, some, some of our products are still sweet with sucralose, so that might be an issue. That's where our tropical orange, vanilla cream, and our plain UCAN are all, are all naturally sweetened or have no sweetener. And that's why those are the three best uh, to go with in terms of uh, being proactive and trying to find the best solution. And Ben, if it's the texture, you know, putting, tossing it in a blender, uh, that, that might help with it if it's just the texture that you're unfamiliar with or, you know, definitely using cold water um, would certainly help. It's, it's a little tough sometimes to diagnose these things without knowing, you know, what else you consumed uh, over the course of the day, especially if it's only been a couple times. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the primary ingredient is corn. So I don't know if th there's a small chance you might have a corn sensitivity or, or something like that. Um, so, so, yeah, hopefully those will uh, give you some ideas. But I'd say the biggest thing that we do hear from people switching over to UCAN and that why they make the switch is because they're getting GI issues from a lot of the uh, simple, you know, processed carbohydrates. So, so that they like UCAN because of how easy it is on the stomach. So, Hopefully some of those ideas helped. Um, let's see, Seth. Tom says, I'm a, a, quote, skinny fat ultra runner at 14% body fat. I'm trying to get a bit leaner, down to 10% to be more efficient. Can you can assist in this? If so, how? Um, so absolutely, Tom. And, and I'm not sure when you asked this question, if, if we had shown the slide and, and kind of talked about the fat burning effect uh, of you can. Um, but, but Seth, you know, just maybe to, to reiterate some of the points we raised, how, how does you can help Tom with what he's asking about? Well, so the, the main thing is that it's going to keep your blood sugar stable. It's going to, in terms of skinny fat, it's going to help your body preserve more protein because you're not going to break down your protein because your blood sugar is stable. When your blood sugar gets low, the body also starts to break down muscle, especially when you're running. So as an ultra runner, you're going to find that you're going to keep your blood sugar stable. You're going to burn more fat as fuel. And, you know, I probably... Eat some higher protein foods and more vegetables, just like the example you saw throughout your meals. Um, trade in those, you know, pastas, breads, and rices, you know, for smaller amounts. And and using you can before and after your workouts. And if you're an ultra runner, you might take a you know a, a fuel belt bottle and you know um, have a serving every um, 60 to 90 minutes during your your ultra running, depending on the intensity. And um, you'll, you'll over time you're going to teach your body to better burn fat, and it's just amazing how ultra runners respond to a product. Um, some use the, the vanilla cream version when they're during ultras because the added protein helps curb hunger. So um, you're, you're in for a while. I'm excited for you. And really, Tom, yeah, just, just the, the idea of, uh, you know, taking in less calories but still being able to maintain your energy uh, if you're putting the training in, um, you know, it stands to reason that, that you're going to get leaner over time because, you, you know, you, you just don't need to dump all those simple carbs into your body uh, in an effort to maintain your energy. Um, this this question comes from both Nancy and and Ta, um, sorry both Nancy and Lance. Uh, it's kind of a similar question. So uh, Nancy asks, uh, are the UCAN gels the best way to get UCAN in your system during a long distance event? And and Lance kind of plays off that saying, um, I've taken UCAN on the run in an Ironman. I found it difficult to consume 20 ounces of fluid with the serving within a few minutes. Too heavy. I think he means too much water. Um, can you spread out the consumption longer? So. Um, that, so let, let's address the first element of that. So, uh, you know, I, I think in terms of the UCAN gel being the best way, if you're really trying to get that serving of UCAN in your system quickly, which is the way that kind of the product, um, from what we know about is the, is the way it's the best consumed, then the UCAN gel, if you can handle the consistency of it mixed thicker is definitely the best way to do it because, uh, you know, you, it's, it's exactly the point that Lance raised. You don't, you, you don't want to be trying to chug 20 ounces of water over a five or 10 minute span. So absolutely, uh, you know, Nancy and Lance, uh, to, to address both your questions for sure, that that's the, the way to do it. Um, in yeah, terms of, right. yeah, I just, ahead, yeah, the, the fact is this is not something you sip on like a typical sports drink. You know, you really, you know, putting it in, in eight ounces of water is, is the best thing to do or making it to a gel like we're talking about. So b before we address that, because Nancy had a, had a question about why you don't sip on it like a regular sports drink, let's address that, Seth, since you just brought it up. But before that, I just want to mention that 
as a thank you to uh, all of you guys tonight, we are offering a, a special discount for being part of this webinar that you can take advantage of through the end of the week, through midnight uh, on Sunday. I'm going to post the code in the chat right now. You'll also get it in the uh, follow-up email that you'll receive after this webinar. But the code is you can learn for 15% off. It's all one word. It's you can L E A R N for 15% off at our online store, which I will post both the code and the URL in the chat in a moment. But uh, Seth, while I am typing um, to, to address Nancy's question, why why don't you sip on you can like a regular sports drink? Because it's it's slow it's slower absorbed and and you want it to all, all be fast through your stomach and digesting out of your intestine into your bloodstream so it, it keeps keeping you steady you know and I I do have to tell you you know we have people that break the rules and they sip on it but that's that's more but they're usually having a full serving in their bodies before they start sipping on it so um so but in, in general we found across the board though is that for the majority of people it works better if you're um, consuming it you know. You know, all at one, not all at once, but within within a you know a 20 or 30 minute period. The point is not to nurse a, a, a scoop or a packet over the course of 90 minutes. Hope so, that's clear. So that's that's a good point, Seth. What you said. So if if you are going to sip on you can, you know, we would definitely recommend. You know, don't don't that that first serving. It, it's very important. Sorry, let, let me uh, a little tongue tied, but let, let me say this a better way. It's it's important to take that first serving of you can 30 to 45 minutes prior to exercise, you know? So, so in that, in that regard, the pre workout serving of you can, we kind of recommend that you don't break the rules and, and get it all in your system. But, but once you start fueling during the race, you know, if you have a, a packet of you can mixed up and you want to kind of take, uh, you know, half of that, half of that packet, uh, you know, at, at once, and then take the second half of that packet 45 minutes later, that's fine. You know, you can, you can kind of, space it out. But so you don't necessarily need to to chug that whole packet, that entire scoop at once, but you do each time you take it, want to kind of try to take a substantial serving in, you know, at least half a packet or a third of a packet, you know, half a scoop um, and get that in your system at once. So, you know, if, if a packet, if you were going to fuel with a packet every 90 minutes during exercise, an alternative would be to fuel with half a packet every 45 minutes during exercise. And that, that could work fine too. Uh, you know, so so think of it more like that. W even if you're breaking it up, still dose with a uh, somewhat substantial amount of it. And and one way to think of it is, you know, as we've talked about the way sugars enter your body and and the idea of the gels and the sugar-based drinks, the sugars are boom, they're hitting you right away. So every time you sip on a on a sugar-based drink, you're getting a little surge of energy immediately. And and so that's kind of the theory between slowly nursing and sipping on a sugar-based drink. You know, it's kind of that that spike, that spike, that spike. So, but with you can, what's happening is again, it's it's acting in a time released manner. So, when if you're just sipping on a small amount of you can, you're not going to get an effect from that for you know 10, 15, 20 minutes. So, so that's why it kind of makes sense to get more in your system at once. So it's all in your system and it can break down slowly and release slowly over time. So, I hope that makes sense. Um, let's see, we got a few more questions um, over here. He said. Um, so this is from Mark. He says, I'm a triathlete and have a very fast metabolism. Should I be taking you can during exercise as well? Um, so Mark, we've kind of covered uh, in terms of the, the timing of it, uh, roughly every 75 or 90 minutes. But Seth, in terms of maybe the first aspect of this question, having a fast metabolism, uh, how does the, your metabolism kind of affect the, the interval or, or the rate of which you need to dose with you can? I mean, you might, you might need a larger dose if you have a very fast metabolism. Um, so you could always try to double up your serving if you if you, if you wanted to. But uh, even people with fast metabolism have, have noticed that you can you know is is good for them. And if you have a really fast metabolism, you you could always have some extra food with you if it's a um if it's a long duration event to help curb hunger and use you can to really keep just keep your energy steady. So uh, with that, Mark had asked something else which I missed previously. But he said if you're taking you can before a triathlon, should you also eat breakfast such as oatmeal? Uh, which is also slow releasing. So let, let's um, answer Mark's question, but address his overall point, uh, which which I'm sure many people want to know is is what works well in combination with you can, and and what uh, will negate some of the benefits of you can. I mean, so if you're gonna if you're gonna have breakfast, I would have it probably an, an hour and a half before you have um, before you you start with your you can serving. But we have some folks now. 
They're not waking up. They're, they're having their breakfast is including you can. They might have two scoops of vanilla cream you can and uh, some almond butter and, and make a paste out of it, add a little bit more protein, and they have a uh, they have their own porridge that they're using instead of oatmeal. Um, you could try that. There's one triathlon nutritionist, Ben Greenfield. He has some scoops of the plain you can, add some amino acid powder, some protein powder, add some nuts and seeds, and he's making his own porridge too. Um, so you can either create your own you can recipe and have that 30 to 45 minutes before you start, um, or have a larger breakfast an hour and a half before. Um, you know, some folks are also doing, you know, the protein hands to you can, you know, an hour and a half before they start that porridge, and then having another you can, like the tropical orange, 30 minutes before their race. So it's flexible. You try out different things and, and see what works best for you because everybody's body's a little bit different. So in general, one of the ways I like to think about this is that, so you can, should be your, uh, you know, could, can be your primary carbohydrate source. And then so for, from an energy standpoint, uh, you're taken care of with you can. So, so if things that work well, you know, that complement you can are sources of protein and sources of fat. And, and we're talking in the context of an endurance event because, you know, while you can may take care of your energy for, for a full half Ironman or an Ironman, you, you may feel hungry, you know, you may feel hungry while, when you're out there for so long. So I think people, people usually supplement you can with things like, you know, the, the squeezable almond butter packets. Um, so, you know, a, a low sugar bar. Um, so, so that's really what you should be focused on. You know, treat you can as your carb, your, your energy source and, and what you're having to supplement. It can be sources of protein, sources of fat that'll help curb hunger in your stomach. Now, if you're somebody that likes liquid calories, um, I think Nancy had asked this question, uh, when you're out doing a marathon or half Ironman, um, and it's, you know, multiple hours, um, should you use the protein drink mix or just stick with the sports drink? So Nancy kind of to address that and play off what Mark asked, um, if hunger is an issue and you don't like to consume solid foods, uh, then you can definitely use the protein drink mix. You know, a lot of ultra runners, Ironman, half Ironman triathletes um, will do that. Even marathoners it, it will do that because they're getting the steady release of energy from our carb and the proteins help curbing their hunger in the stomach. And, and Mark, the same principle applies in terms of your pre-workout breakfast. You know, if, if things that work well too are like, you know, eggs, avocado, uh, you, you know, we have a lot of people kind of having two scrambled eggs uh, with a, a you can shake on the side as their breakfast. So again, it's the same principle. The, the eggs are their protein source uh, and they're helping curb the hunger. And the you can is, is their carbohydrate source, which is giving them that, that slow bleed, that, that steady release of energy to maintain their blood sugar. Um, so I, I think we got through most of the questions, uh, but, but Seth, maybe one more thing I wanted you to hit on um, was um, the, <laughs> actually, <laughs> Sorry, Patty. Patty asked a uh, question that made me laugh. So uh, I, I might still be uh, a little bit immature, but uh, but I'll, I'll pose it to you anyway, Seth, because I know you get this one a lot. And one of the one of the beauties of working at UCAN and with with uh, endurance athletes is that uh, you know people are people are very comfortable emailing us and sharing their uh, their uh, bowel movements with us, just to say. So Patty asked, does anyone seem to have issues with flatulence? Seth, I know you've uh, had the pleasure of talking to a lot of triathletes about that. Uh, what, what would you say to that? You know, so, you know, some triathletes have, you know, issues with flatulence in general. Um, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're using, using UCAN for the first time and it's, and you're transitioning from other sports nutrition, it might take a few sessions to get used to it because you're so used to your, your old way of fueling. And, you know, I spoke, I probably had a couple emails where people had some flatulence, so you can, um, but it usually goes away as they get used to you can because they're transitioning from uh, a different way of fueling before. And just one other small note on that is that you know the uh, Seth alluded this, to this earlier, but um, uh, our lemonade, pomegranate, and chocolate flavors use uh, a, a little bit of uh, artificial sweetener, which is a uh, uh, Splenda. So some people have noticed that that the uh, gas issue occurs more when they have you know, and this is primarily endurance athletes when they have multiple servings over a long workout of those ones. So. You might try the cranberry raspberry, the orange, the vanilla cream, or the plain uh, you can, um, you know, which which are all naturally sweetened with both uh, with either stevia or monk fruit, depending on the flavor. And, and we've had people who've made that switch and, and noticed that the gas has uh, has gone away. So that's one thing to consider. And, and the other thing to, to to really think about is if, if you're switching from other nutrition um, to you can, and you're an endurance athlete, and you're used to you know 250, 300, 350 calories of your old sports nutrition per hour, you don't want to do a calorie to calorie match of you can 
to those more fast acting uh, carbohydrate sources simply because you just won't need that much you can. So that's another issue where we've seen people have gas is where they're just overdoing it with you can because, you know, for whatever reason, they may not trust the product. They may not have had the luxury to understand how exactly it works and, and that you need less calories of it because you're also able to tap into and burn fat calories. So Patty, that could be another issue is, you know, if you if you were taking in 250 calories of maltodextrin and you're trying to take in 250 calories an hour of our super starch, we have seen uh, with some folks that causing gas as well. Um, so I hope that helps. Seth, in terms of, um, you know, we, we've talked a little bit about it for longer workouts, but, but you, you know, the benefit of using UCAN for, you know, an hour strength training session or, or you know, uh, a five mile run, now what, what's, what's the benefit of using UCAN, you know, even when you're not going for two hours and, and doing an endurance workout? I mean, with the majority of folks we have who are, are 5 a.m. runners or um, people go to the gym in the morning, they're having a scoop before they work out because it's easy on their stomach and it keeps their blood sugar level while they burn more fat as fuel. And, you know, if you're, if you're going to the gym for an hour workout doing circuit training or, or um, body weight training, it's going to keep you steady, especially in the morning, and, and you're going to have a much better workout and it's going to give you steady energy for the, especially the second half of your workout and you won't end your workout with, with cravings or, you know, kind of that low blood sugar feeling. You know, I, I talk about how our biggest competitor for, for before a workout is really is really the banana because a lot of folks have a banana. It's there. They feel good for 15 or 20 minutes, but what about the last 30 minutes of the workout? When, when you notice you can the most of your hour workouts is how you feel the second half, and that's the beauty of it. Um, when I'm when I'm doing my spring training, I know that I can uh, I'm able to sustain my my power output my 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 strength the last half an hour instead of kind of you know falling apart or uh, Letting, you never want to let low blood sugar get in your way, and that's why it's so important to keep your blood sugar stable, even for shorter workouts. We have folks who do speed workouts, even 30 minutes on the treadmill where they're doing intervals. They still have that scoop of can before to keep them steady and to help them burn more fat as fuel. I can't tell you how many you know people that have used can for strength training have told us that it just makes them feel like they want to do more, and and you know it kind of manifests itself in a couple ways. A they're not cheating themselves at the end of the workout. So, you know, they're not saying, you know, in their last few exercises, let me do oh, two sets instead of three, six reps instead of eight, things like that. But, but, but they're actually also telling us that, you know, when I'm done with my normal routine, I'm like, hey, let me go hop on the bike and do 20 minutes of cardio. Let me add in a few other exercises. So it's really that power of keeping your blood sugar and your energy stable that, that really allows you to train harder and, and exercise harder. And, and to play off what Seth said, you know, I really, you know, if I'm going out and running four or five miles and, you know, it might take me, you know, 40, 35 to 45 minutes, depending on the day. Um, I really like using the serving of UCAN because when I'm done, I don't feel as run down. And if I, if I have to, if I'm running in the morning and then I have to go straight to work, you know, it's, it's, I feel fine. My energy is stable throughout the morning versus, you know, when I was would have a banana, then when, when I'm done, I mean, all I want to do is crawl back into bed and then you're kind of completely wiped out. So that's a, that's a, a big aspect of it too. Um, and actually, uh, so Tom says, today I did a high intensity leg and ab workout for an hour. I had UCAN prior and within 30 minutes post-workout, I had UCAN mixed with my whey protein. Is that recommended or okay? Tom, that Perfect. is fantastic. So Seth, the, kind of the, the benefit to what Tom did. Well, he had he kept his blood sugar steady. He was during the workout, helped allowed his body to have access to his fat stores to burn fat during his workout, and then he recovered with UCAN to keep to continue the fat burning effects and keep his blood sugar steady after the workout. It's exactly how you should use it. And and kind of a, a one thing to note, Tom, I, when you asked if that was okay, um, I, I'm not sure if you were asking that kind of from a usage standpoint or maybe from like a a health standpoint. But I, I will just reiterate, you know, UCAN is a food, so you can't overdose you know it's not a supplement so there's nothing like you should only be having one serving of this or or you know one serving every x hours i mean nothing like that i mean it, you know it's it's in the same way like you can't really you wouldn't over consume oatmeal yes you may get sick of it or 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 whatnot but but yeah the, if that was where your question was going tom uh in terms of how much of it can you have uh yeah no issues at all with with what you did and, and with that in mind that Seth maybe we'll just uh just show one more slide uh to to have people um to kind of see a little bit what what Tom what we were alluding to with with Tom's workout in, in terms of the high intensity workout um so 
give people a little bit of a, a background, and I'll try to point with my mouse to the uh, to the applicable part of uh, what they're looking at on this on this slide test. But give people the background of of what this is testing, and and even the kind of the overall background of of what the notion is of what your body is burning during high intensity exercise. So this is a treadmill test where there was an endurance athlete got him hooked up to a uh, an oxygen mask to test his fat burning levels and his breathing rates. You can see that at 10.9 miles per hour, which is pretty high intensity with UCAN, if you cross over, he's still burning over 50% fat as his fuel source. When he had hammer heat before a typical maltodextrin fast acting carb, to show you how carbs shut down your fat burning at high intensities, look at 10.9 miles per hour, he's only burning 12% fat. So it really challenges the notion you know that the body can't burn fat at high intensities. So look, we're burning over 50% fat at your high intensities. So, um, so that's the beauty of you can is that you can still use it for high intensity and burn fat at high intensity and get the same benefits. So really, the takeaway there is that when your blood sugar is stable, your body is always going to burn fat. And 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 really, even if you didn't register much about what we were talking about with insulin, that that that's an important way to kind of just think about what's happening when you don't spike your sugars. The body is not saying, hey, I have to deal with all this extra sugar in my blood. It's saying, let me do what I want to do during exercise, which is burn fat. Um, we had a lot of great questions. Uh, really appreciate everybody's participation today. Seth, is there anything you would like to uh, add to close things out before, uh, before we sign off tonight? No, I think the main thing is that you want to use UCAN as, your, as a healthy snack before you work out, whether it's 45 minutes or a long workout. A lot of folks, you know, are doing a, maybe a short run for 45 minutes on a Wednesday afternoon. You know, it's still have it before. It'll you know, keep your blood sugar stable, and you'll train your body to better burn fat, which will also be so important to carry over to your longer duration workouts. So, consider using you can for your short workouts, but also for your long workouts. Um, and then again, you know, if you're someone who on non-workout day is looking for a snack at three o'clock. Try our protein-enhanced version as a, to help curb hunger in the stomach and, and keep you steady throughout the afternoon instead of reaching for a, uh, you know, a, a you know, a Red Bull or a, a um, you know, a sugary drink or or a third cup of coffee. You know, try you can out as, as as a way to keep yourself steady in between your meals. You'd be surprised. So really, in a nutshell, you know what we we hopefully got across today is that it's very very important from a health standpoint to keep your blood sugar stable. Now there's there's uh, you know, a variety of things that you can, um, you know, that will help you keep your blood sugar stable. But, but, you know, you can is, is a very convenient, uh, energy source. And from a sports nutrition product standpoint, and, and even like we talked about, even from a food standpoint, um, there's very few things out there, nothing out there that, that actually that'll keep your blood sugar stable for as long as you can. So really treat you can as a healthy form of carbohydrate that you could have at, at any point in the day when you want steady energy, whether it's before your workout, whether it's middle of the day. And again, if you're using it as more of like the meal replacement, it's, it's perfectly fine to add other healthy ingredients to it. So you can on its own may not offer you a complete nutrition profile in terms of your vitamins and your greens and, and everything like that. But you know, you can add, you can add all those things to you can, and, and it's really the ideal carbohydrate portion of any meal replacement shake. So, um, so yeah, use it before exercise. You can use it post workout and play around with it at, at various times depending on your goals. Um, so with all that, we really want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Um, make sure to take advantage again of that special discount as part of this webinar. That's you can learn for fifteen percent off at our online store. Good through the end of the day Sunday. And uh, you know, for anybody that joined us late or just kind of wants to re-listen to some of the things we talked about, you'll be getting a recording of this webinar in your email uh, in the next couple of hours. So thanks a lot, everybody. I'm Varun Sriram. Really great to chat with all of you this evening. Thanks to you, Seth. Thanks for your time and all your knowledge. Hey, Varun. Great talking with you. All right. And uh, keep the conversation going. You can email us. Um, you, you've got my email, uh, Seth's email, if you'd like to talk to him. You can email him at ucanrd at ucanco.com. That's UCAN Registered Dietitian. Uh, Seth um, is you know, the, the voice you heard on the screen, and, uh, and I just posted his email in the chat. Hit us up on Facebook, hit us up on Twitter, and we hope to see you guys at some expos around the country. We'll be at the uh, New York City Triathlon this weekend. We'll be at, let's see, the Chicago Triathlon August 24th. We'll be at the New Haven Road Race in Connecticut, Labor Day weekend, New York City Marathon, Chicago Marathon. So uh, so a lot, of, uh, a lot of races coming up in the near future. 
Uh, Nancy said, come out to Seattle. Nancy, we were just at the uh, Seattle Rock and Roll, actually. So uh, we will actually be doing more uh, events on the West Coast in the near future. So, uh, you know, if there's anything you'd like to see us at, please do share it with us. We always like to consider events that our, uh, that our customers uh, will be at. Um, so uh, thanks to everybody uh, for joining us tonight. I really appreciate the time, and we look forward to chatting with you in the near future. Take care.